So now we are on to, I want to make sure that everyone can still see this. Um, so now we're going to talk about heat set inserts. So um, heat set inserts are maybe my favorite type of insert for 3D printing. Um, there are two reasons for that. So I have a, a little bin. Um, let's go to the part cam over here and we'll just zoom in. Um, so I have this bin of inserts right here. Um, how heat set inserts work is um, you have these little, um, these little inserts and it's gonna be a little hard to see here, but they have these, this neural pattern around the, uh, around the insert and they're also tapered. So they're, they have a smaller diameter on the bottom than on the top. When we go in and we design a cavity for a heat set, um, oh, one question that I just saw come up, are there any steel parts around the nozzle area of an Onyx One or Onyx Pro? Like, could you, so playing on the embedding the nuts idea, could you embed small magnets? Um, there are some steel parts on the, on the print head. I don't know exactly which ones. So if you try to embed magnets, I actually have had this happen. The magnets will pop up onto the nozzle, but you can get around that by, um, by uh, if you use Loctite 401 or 420, those work really well. Uh, Loctite 420 specifically works very well for metal parts to onyx parts. And so you can glue your, your magnet down into, um, you can glue your magnet down into the part um, so that it doesn't get affected by the steel nozzle. Um, so, so let's go to heat set inserts here. Um, so what you do when you're designing for heat set inserts is, um, is you basically design in this little tapered hole, like we can see right here. Um, if you were to go on, um, Actually, I, I can show you this right now. So if, um, if you were to go on and find, uh, find these, these heat set inserts, threaded, oh, oops, no, those are from metal. Um, let's go to metric and go to M4 and we want these heat set ones. So, so the tapered ones are the, are the ideal ones and I'll explain a little why about, uh, about why that happens. But you can see that um, the taper, you, you have to add in this taper. So you design basically a counterboard hole and then you add a draft or you add a chamfer to achieve that taper, which is gonna be about eight degrees for these M4 inserts. It changes depending upon the inserts. The manufacturer will tell you what kind of hole you need to apply. Um, and so, um, so what this taper does is when you are inserting your part, um, I'm actually gonna start heating up my soldering iron so that I can show you. Um, these inserts you use a, um, let's go to the, back to the part cam again. So these are called heat set in inserts. Obviously you need to heat them up to insert them into your part. So I have a soldering iron over here um, that I'm heating up uh, to, I think it's about 700 degrees is what this goes up to. Um, and the soldering iron has this special tip on it. So this is not a normal soldering iron tip. I actually have the other normal tip here, the pointed one that you use for soldering. Um, this is a special tip for heat set inserts that you see sort of has these stages of reduced diameters. And they sell these tips, you, you can get them. You can also use a normal soldering iron tip for this, but it won't, it, it won't always work as well. Um, but what you do is, and let me make sure, yep, this is up to temperature at 750 degrees. You take this insert and you just sort of start to, to press it in. Um, the, the soldering iron's still heating up, but the insert basically sinks into the part. And it does that because the plastic, the, the, in, the insert is conductive and, and, and uh, sort of conducts the heat from the soldering iron. And it in turn melts the plastic around, uh, around the insert. And there's a really interesting thing that happens here, which is that because the plastic is melted around the insert, I talked a little bit before about how 3D printed parts are not isotropic. So they can shear or split along layer lines. Um, when you're melting the plastic with the heat set insert, you get um, all of the plastic around it starts to fuse together a lot better. So around the insert itself, 
you actually have local isotropic properties. So it's gonna be a lot harder to pull out, especially because of these neurals that you see on, uh, on the inserts. It's gonna, be, um, it's gonna be harder to pull out because um, unlike with our threaded or our tapped inserts, um, the heat has redistributed the plastic around the part and made it a lot stronger. Uh, I'm gonna test the torque strength of these first um, to show you what happens. So basically in order to, um, in order to apply enough torque to break these, we have to, uh, those neurals are gonna have to start tearing through that isotropic plastic to, um, to break the part. So let's see my clamp to be a bit tighter. So that was two, gonna go up to four, that's six, eight, and let me go up to 14, still nothing, all right. Okay, so that was 20 there, that was um, that torque resistance. So the torque resistance is pretty high on these inserts because that heating up and cooling down of the plastics once the insert is set is, um, it really has a lot of power. It really will help uh, help with the strength of the part. So that was that went up to 20. So the torque strength is really high. Um, I'd say comparable to sort of like uh, having a, a, ca a captive or embedded uh, square nut in your part. Um, it's again because of those neurals and because of that isotropy. Um, when we go ahead and we test these parts, so I did this in two ways. Um, this first test over here. I put the insert on the face of my part, so we no longer have to have, so this is more like a, a helicoil or a tapped or printed thread. We no longer have to have the bolt going all the way through the part. We just sort of have it on, on the face of our part. So I'm gonna screw that in there. And So what we have to do, and this is where, I was talking about the taper a little before, and this is where the taper comes in handy um, because I'm gonna draw a picture for you that I'll then show under the camera. Um, so, oops. I'm... So the tapered cavity looks a little like this, right? Oh, actually, sorry, this is the wrong one. This is gonna be, I'll talk about this in, in a minute. Um, but we can put inserts either on the front side so that you have minimal profile. You can just have it right there. Or we can put them on the back side and that's where the taper comes into play. So I'll get to that in just a minute. So right now, I'm gonna start pulling this insert out. So. I'd initially expect the insert to just pull right out, but you can see there's actually a lot of bending going on in our beam. And again, that's because that isotropy has really helped uh, reflowing that plastic around, redistributing the way that the part is going to behave. So finally we pull that insert out, but that did require like a fair amount of force to pull out. Again, it's just the neurals need to break through the plastic. So it's kind of similar to our threaded, our, our printed or tapped threads that we had earlier. But, um, but the advantage here, let's go back to the forward camera. The advantage here is that we have that isotropy around the part that's making it, that's making the insert more securely embedded, um, embedded in there. So, um, so the profile for the front, it's gonna be a two. The heat set inserts are, are usually pretty thick. Um, the, the pull strength, um, is also going to be a 2, 2.5 maybe, because of that isotropy. Uh, the torsional strength, again, that, that's probably going to be, um, be a 3 installation. We do have to do that work with the soldering iron. Um, and um, so installation, I'm going to set that as a 2. And then wear or lifetime, you're dealing with metal threads here, so it's not going to wear as much, but... Um, what you could see is some, uh, again, be, just because we're interfacing with that plastic, that, that wear, um, I'm gonna put 
a, um, a two for that one. Um, but in general, these are a pretty secure way. This is probably even a, a 2.5 um, because the, the inserts are a very secure way of putting those threads in your part because you're basically embedding these metal threads into the plastic and making that plastic as strong as it possibly can be around those metal threads to make sure that the forces are distributed well and that the part won't break when, when you start to pull it apart. Um, so the, the next big thing here is, um, is instead of putting your parts on, um, instead of putting your insert, let's go to the part camera. Um, we're running a little bit over time, but this is uh, the second to last test that I'm gonna do. So instead of putting the insert on the front of our part, we can put it on the back of the part. And um, so now it's sort of like with the nut. In order to pull this insert out, we have to pull it all the way through the part. And, um, and where's the marker? Where did my marker go? Um, oh, here it is, okay. And so that, that's where we talk about um, this sort of idea right here. We have this tapered hole that the insert is set into and we have that insert. And so the taper on the insert locks into the taper on the hole and this has more distributed, more surface area for the forces to distribute. Um, and the pressure ends up sort of going that way instead of being directly down cutting into the plastic. So that taper is the taper, the heating up and the knurls are the three like really, really beneficial parts of these heat set inserts because they all increase the strength um, in different aspects. So when we apply that insert to, um, Sorry, let me just clear this out. Um, is, um, sorry, I just need to reassemble, um, reassemble one of these tests. And, okay. Um, so, Uh, while you're doing that, Alex, Kyle asks which brand of heat set inserts we recommend? Um, so I don't have a particular recommendation. I'd say just uh, the, always look for ones that have the taper. Um, we purchase uh, sort of, we get ours through McMaster, um, but, and, and looking again for, for those tapered ones. Um, but I think just making sure that it has a taper and it has those neurals is, um, is important. These ones are, are brass inserts. Um, so, um, yeah, the, these are just the ones that we use because they're easily easily accessible to us. I'm having a bit of trouble screwing this in. Um, I had another one, I thought. So I think what happened here was there was a little support material stuck when I embedded the insert into the part. Um, and I just need to, to clear that, to clear that support material out. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, any other questions coming in? Uh, I did see an interesting comment about uh, going back to nuts, mm -hmm. asking whether we've tried T-nuts with prongs. T-nuts with prongs. Um, no, uh, I actually haven't tried that, but um, that's, a, that's a really interesting idea. Um, when you have like sort of those T-nuts, um, they, I would expect them to behave similarly to sort of a, a nut with a washer because the, the sort of flat of the T-nut um, adds a lot of surface area so it'll distribute the forces pretty well. But the prongs will end up cutting into the plastic. Um, so I think that'd behave probably similarly to, to sort of a captive nut or, or a nut just sort of on the outside of your part. Um, but I actually haven't tested those. Uh, and then James asks, is it possible to embed a heat set insert? Um, it's another interesting question. I, I haven't tried that. Um, but 
I think what may happen is you may ruin the print because you'd have to use the soldering iron like uh, on the, um, you'd have to use the soldering iron while the print is unfinished. And um, you may run into some issues with some plastic deforming or, or, or something like that um, for when you resume the print and it tries to print over it. Um, but in general, like the heat set inserts are still gonna be really strong on the face of your part. So you don't really need to embed them. Uh, I usually put them on the face or on the backside. Um, so when I go ahead and test this, again, those tapers are doing a lot to lock that insert into the part. So we can see that. And, and basically, again, this is sort of back to the beam bending thing. You can see both of these, these beams are bending pretty far. I may require my cheater bar again to, to break this. And so you can see like some of these threads, the, the, the bolt just has pulled out. But with something like this, it's, it's making it bend the beam. And so the, the failure mode is very different. And there we go. Our, the beam, uh, the insert has broken. Um, and again, it's that, that taper means that we have to pull the insert all the way through the part to get it to break. Um, again, I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen so I can show you one other thing that we can, that we can do with this. Um, if we go back to Iger and, um, and we go to this heat set insert, set insert rear, um, we can further reinforce this with carbon fiber. Um, so let me find one of these ones that I reinforced. Um, so we can further reinforce this with, uh, with carbon fiber. Um, and I, I was talking a little bit about that taper before. If we go, let me go to reinforcement settings. And again, I'm gonna go to concentric fiber. Hit save. So let's wait for this to path. And that taper, again, does a whole lot to improve the strength of, uh, of our part. And when we reinforce that taper in the cavity um, of our part with continuous strands of fiber, um, we can get it to be really strong because of just the way that that force distribution works. Um, so you have, there's just our normal bolt hole. And then, um, oops, I, I guess I didn't fill in those, those sections, but um, when you, oh, let me expand this group. That's what's happening. So when that hole size increases and it's sort of a slow increase, you can't really tell here, but those rings around that taper um, really like improve the, um, really improve the strength, especially with, with fiber reinforcement. Um, and will really, again, with that force distribution, it's sort of like you're relying on the, um, on the strength, of the hoop strength of the fibers in this case to break that insert. Um, and that's, um, so it's like you're trying to split a tube of continuous carbon fiber apart. Um, and that can make it really, really strong. Um, so we're gonna go back here and I've printed one of these fiber beams out. Let me stop sharing my screen so that you can see it. Um, so I printed one of these fiber beams out and um, we're gonna put it in our test rig. And so that fiber, already I can feel that resistance from that fiber. This is already getting pretty hard. And so this is a really, really strong way to, to connect your parts. I don't. So I can actually hear some of the fibers start to break at around this point. I can barely put pressure on this anymore. So I'm gonna go to my cheater bar again to get a little bit more torque on this. And it's still taking a whole lot of force. 
And again, we have to pull this insert all the way through, but it's not just all the way through plastic now, it's through, through a tube of fiber. And there we go. Um, so finally that insert came out. Um, it was a pretty nasty failure, but one of the interesting things, sort of the fiber delaminated here, but also we had to like, that part really wasn't flexing much. That's because of that fiber. Um, and, um, and it's still sort of holding on that heat sort of, and the fiber adhered everything together. But um, so, so having those heat set inserts on the rear side of your part can really, really bump up that strength. Um, so let me find, I lost my marker. Oh, here it is. Okay, great. So let's go back to the board. Um, so, um, so heat sets on the back, the profile, we do have to make some compromise because the profile isn't very good. So I'm going to give that a, a one. We have to go all the way through our part again. So it's sort of like captive nuts in that, in that regard, but the pull strength is amazing. And so that's, that's going to be a three. The, the torque strength, similar to heat set inserts in the front, actually exactly the same, going to be about a three. Um, installation is a two because we have to use that tool to put it in there. Um, and then the wear or the lifetime of the part, again, sort of two, 2.5. Um, the threads will hold up pretty well. Um, and because of that isotropy, the part locally reflows, the plastic reflows around the part to make it a lot stronger. And then when we use fiber with that um, on the back side of our part, that really, really bumps up that strength. So the pull strength is gonna be even greater, probably around a four or a five, even though our scale's only the three. Um, but the rest of the, the rest of the settings would sort of uh, be the same. Um, but yeah, so that, that's sort of the breakdown of, let me pull this back here. Sorry, this is a lot of stuff, a lot of different types of threads. Um, but let's see, maybe I can move this out a little bit. Uh, there we go. Looks like you can all see that now. Um, so all of these threads are really good at some things, really maybe perform poorly in other situations. Um, I think that the heat set inserts, because you can either put them on the back or the front, they're both versatile and they're still pretty strong. Um, but you do have some compromise because they take up some amount of space, both uh, diametrically and, and along the axis of the bolt where you, if you want it on the back with fiber and you have to have it go all the way through. Um, so while like printed or tapped holes are really easy, really quick, they're really not that strong. But uh, as we sort of move this way, that strength increases and, um, and the torque strength relatively increases too. So this is because we're putting more and more robust and optimized for plastics components as we move from this side of the chart to this side of the chart. Um, so again, I, I would really recommend heat set inserts, but there may be situa situations in which a nut may be better um, one thing that you can do if you want to clamp two parts together is you can use an all thread, um, like a, a threaded rod, and put nuts on either side to sandwich it. Um, but I hope everyone had a great time watching me break some of these parts and show you how these different types of threads fail. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to us. Um, we do have, uh, we just launched Mark Ford's Additive Manufacturing University where these webinars are a part of. So if you're interested in learning more about 3D printing, um, we're gonna have more webina webinars like these every month. We have a section of the website um, called the Learning Library, where you can read a lot about different 3D printing techniques and types of printers and types of materials. Um, and we also have certification programs that you can sign up for um, on, the, um, like on, on our Mark Ford's Additive Manufacturing University page. So thank you so much. I hope you had a great time. Uh, we're always looking for ways to improve and uh, show our customers more ways to design parts. So um, should we send to webinars at MarkForge? Yep, there is an address, uh, webinars at markforge.com, which you can email with any suggestions that you have about uh, what you'd like to see us do next. Um, as Alex mentioned, 
for building these uh, out so that uh, you all have a great resource for uh, instruction and, and help when you're trying to solve problems with additive manufacturing. So if there's anything in particular that uh, a, a topic that you'd like for us to cover, uh, feel free to email us, email us at webinars at markforge.com or re really uh, any of the MarkForged addresses uh, that you can find on our website as well. Uh, and just let us know and then we'll work through it and we'll see what we can produce for you. All right, thank you so much. Yep, thanks everyone for joining us today and for your participation and questions. Uh, we have been recording uh, today's webinar and we will be sending out a, this recording uh, via email uh, to everyone within the next uh, few days. And as Alex mentioned, uh, you can find a whole bunch of new resources uh, regarding Mark Forge University uh, at markforge.com forward slash learn. Uh, thanks again, everyone. Uh, have a, a great day and we look forward to seeing you at the next one.